Hey everyone! Today I decided to share with you guys something I've learned recently. I learned how to make sourdough, but I learned how to make a sourdough focaccia. And so I decided today that I would show you guys how I did that. Uh, the last one I made was really good. I'm hoping today's turns out well as well. So let me show you some of the ingredients and then we'll put this together. And I'll show you the recipe book that I use as well. Um, and then we'll get started putting it together. Okay, first, the um, book that I use is this Artesian Sourdough Made Simple. Um, this one's by Emily Rafa, I believe is her name. Anyway, this is a great book. I struggled with learning how to make sourdough and this is what helped me overcome those struggles and make it. And she has a basic focaccia recipe in here and this is what I'm gonna use for the basic dough. And then the stuff that I put on top of it um, is just kind of something I wanted to try. But so a good cookbook is great. This one I would really highly recommend. Okay, you're also gonna need a kitchen scale. Um, sourdough works best if you have a kitchen scale. Um, flour, obviously. Do not use bleached flour, or at least not totally. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Bleached flour has no nothing that yeast can eat. And so it will die and it won't raise correctly. You can use it for yeasted flour or yeasted breads, but not for the sourdough. It doesn't work very well. Uh, so an unbleached white flour or a whole grain flour works good, but you're gonna wanna use mostly, for this focaccia, you're gonna wanna use mostly um, an unbleached white flour. Um, this recipe is a little bit different than most sourdough because it does have honey in it, which also feeds the yeast, but it also makes the, um, the bread quicker. Uh, sourdough usually takes a fairly long time, 12 to 18 hours, but this focaccia is a lot quicker and part of it is because of the honey that's in it. Um, obviously you're gonna need salt, you're gonna need water, um, you're gonna need your starter. So if you don't have a starter, that book is a great resource to learn how to make a starter. It's not hard. Um, and, but you, and you're gonna need your starter to be active. So I fed this last night so that it would be ready this morning. Um, you're gonna need some olive oil and you're gonna want olive oil that is not an extra virgin or a virgin olive oil. You're gonna want something, this one says for sauteing and grilling because this is not gonna be used in the bread. It's going to be used on the pan that we're going to cook it on and it's gonna be a fairly heavy coat of olive oil and you want something that's not going to uh, change its chemical compound as it gets really hot because it's gonna cook at a fairly high temperature. So you're gonna to want to um, <clears throat> pick an olive oil that will work well with that. If you don't wanna use an olive oil or you're worried about it or you don't have one that's not extra virgin or whatever, you could also use a um, regular um, vegetable oil, but the olive oil does add a great flavor. And then you're gonna need your bowl. And I've been told, and I don't know if this is true, but I've been told not to use stainless steel bowls with your sourdough, so I have never done that. Um, if anybody has any more information on that, I would love to hear it, but I always use plastic just because I don't want to mess it up. So we're going to get started. One thing to note or that I will tell you that I differ from the recipe in here. Uh, the first time I made it, I thought I was making two. And so I used enough sourdough starter to make two loaves of focaccia or two focaccias and that was the only thing I doubled. I completely spaced out doubling everything else. So I'm, but it worked really great. It raised really well. So I'm going to, again, double the starter and then just use the single loaf recipe for the rest of it. So anyway, let's get going. change from the recipe I do like to add a little bit of whole wheat flour and I grind my own flour um, so <clears throat> that's something that is not in the recipe but I kind of like the flavor 
I don't add a lot because the whole wheat flour makes it take longer to raise and so I don't want it to take forever, um, but I do like a little bit for flavor. So. So you'll notice this is really, really sticky. That's how it's supposed to be. Do not add extra flour to this. Um, at this point in time, I'm going to just cover it with a damp uh, towel and I'm just gonna set it aside. Now this is gonna take about probably six, maybe eight hours to raise, but you don't wanna touch it. A lot of um, sourdoughs are gonna fold it again once or twice more in the next hour or two, but this we're not gonna to touch. We're just going to leave it alone, leave it here for the next six or eight hours. And in the meantime, at some point, I will prepare the stuff that I'm going to put on top, and I'll show you how I do that. Um, but the dough is done. Leave it alone and let it do its thing. Okay, the last thing to do before you're all the way done is to feed your starter. So 60 grams and 60 grams to feed a starter. To start a starter or to feed it, you're gonna want a 60 grams of flour, 60 grams of water. So a one to one ratio. And because I pulled my, you know, used some sourdough for the bread, I don't have to discard anything. Um, I just add this in to my jar after I mix it up really good. I just use an offset spatula to get down in there, mix it around good. You don't have to be, when I first started, I thought I had to be really careful. I learned, no, get this stuff mixed in really good. And then I clean my sides down. And there's my starter. And the rubber band, you can put it around. I don't really look at the rubber band anymore because it rises, sorry, way, way up high. Because it rises way up here. I can tell that it's working. When you first start, it'll only rise just a little bit. And so it's nice to have the rubber band to see that it's actually doing something. But at this point, I don't really need it. But I have it there just in case. And then just cover it with a lid, not tight. You just set it on there and we're off and ready to go with our starter again for tomorrow. All right, so I'm gonna make the filling, or I guess topping, I don't, I don't know what you wanna call it, um, for my focaccia. I'm gonna do onion, garlic, and some Parmesan cheese, and then I'm going to saute it in this. I don't like my onion to be like not cooked. I like it a little bit cooked, softened or whatever. So I'm gonna cook this, saute it in um, some of the olive oil, and then I'm gonna let it cool down. I'm not gonna put the Parmesan cheese in there. I'm just gonna grate it so that I can sprinkle it on top uh, when the focaccia is ready. And the dough is almost ready. It's actually been pretty quick uh, this time. I think it's been about six hours. I guess it's about the right time. Anyway, so I'm going to do my filling, and then I will show you how to prep the dough. The dough is gonna have another raising here in a few minutes, but I'll show you what we do before that second rise. So, here we go.
All right, so there's our onion, there's our garlic. The garlic you can chop up as small or finely as you want, um, but we're gonna cook it to kind of take away the bitterness of the garlic as well as to soften again. Um, but garlic tends to, we like garlic, so we like the bigger pieces, but if you like smaller pieces or if you wanna use garlic powder for flavor but no chunks, that works too. Um, but we're gonna put this in the, uh, or not in the oven, in the pan and saute it. Okay, I'm gonna saute these until they're pretty tender. Uh, before I add the garlic, I don't want the garlic to burn. So we're gonna saute these first, and then we'll add the garlic kind of towards the end. Okay, these are getting some good color, and so we're gonna add the garlic. We're gonna let that cook. Not a super long time, we don't want to burn it, but we do want it to be, we don't want it to be bitter in the final bread. Okay, I'm gonna turn the heat off on that and I'm just gonna let that cool. Um, it's gonna have a chance to cool for about two hours. I don't want it to be really hot when it goes on the dough. Okay, so I have my onions and my garlic here finished, they're cooling. And then I have my Parmesan cheese grated and it's obviously not needing to cool, but it's here ready to go. And it's about, oh, a half a cup, maybe slightly less, but um, just a really quick tip. If you're grating cheese, it's nice to put it on a piece of parchment or a piece of wax paper and then you have it and you can just move it and it keeps the counter clean or mostly clean. <clears throat> okay, the next step, is to take a rimmed baking sheet, a cookie sheet of some sort, and you're gonna put a generous amount of olive oil on the pan, like a tablespoon or two tablespoons. You want it to be actually a fair amount of olive oil because we're gonna flip the dough in it. So, but first you're going to rub it around. and get it up the sides a little bit because this actually raises pretty good. All right, and we're gonna get our dough and dump it on there. So the dough is raised and you don't wanna like mess with it too much, but we're gonna dump it. We're gonna try to dump it. And you'll see how stringy, sorry, stringy it is in there. That's what we're looking for. Okay, so from here we're gonna flip this because we're not gonna cover it with anything now to let it raise the rest of the way and so you want it to be greased so that it doesn't dry out and that's why you want so much oil. But be very careful, flip it. Now, we're just gonna leave this here. We're gonna leave it here for another probably hour and let it, because this kind of deflated it a little bit so we're gonna give it a chance to reinflate a little bit. So we're gonna leave this here for an hour and uncovered. Um, and if you have spots that didn't get oiled, oil them because you don't want it to dry out. Um, <clears throat> and we'll be back to finish putting this together and bake here in about an hour. Okay, so this has rested for a little while. So I'm gonna just kind of stretch it. It doesn't have to go all the way out to the sides, but I am just gonna kind of Stretch and push a little bit. You don't want to deflate it too much.
Okay. And then I'm going to top it with some, with my onions and garlic, and then my Parmesan, Parmesan cheese. Okay, so now I'm gonna let it rest again for probably about half hour, 45 minutes, um, just because I did like deflate it a little bit. And then I'm gonna preheat my oven and I will tell you how much when I get to that point because I can't remember. And then we'll bake this. Um, I did one of these the other day and it was uh, spinach, garlic, and mozzarella cheese. It was really good. Um, I was thinking about doing one that was uh, tomato and basil kind of thing, maybe some garlic in that one, I don't know. Anyway, I mean, there's a lot of options. So we're gonna let this sit again, and like I said, another half hour, 45 minutes, and let it kind of puff again, and then we'll bake it. Okay, so we've been kind of waiting. It's still, it's pretty good. I'm gonna call it good anyway. Dinner's almost ready, so we gotta get this in the oven. But um, it, we need to preheat the oven to 425, and then once that's preheated, I can put that in. Um, it bakes for about 25 to 30 minutes, depending on your oven temperature. And I'll show you the finished product when I pull it out. All right, so this is just barely out of the oven and it looks fantastic. Um, the crust, I don't know if I'll be able to show you the crust is golden it's a little bit dark there probably for what i like but it's good it's perfect it's crispy the top is golden um it's puffy it looks great this is going to be so good with dinner anyway i'm going to take this off and i'm going to put it on a wire rack to cool for a few minutes um dinner's almost ready but this is not like regular sourdough that you have to cool for a really long time like cool it till it's all the way cooled off this is actually really good warm so that's a little bit of a difference with um, focaccia bread, sourdough focaccia as compared to regular sourdough bread. Um, but anyway, I'm going to get this off here and put it on a cooling rack and finish up getting my dinner ready. Okay, so this is cooled a little bit and I'm gonna move it onto my cutting board to cut it. And I found last time it was easiest to cut with a pizza cutter. So that's what we'll use here. I'm gonna go 12 pieces. All right, we'll see how we did. So you can see it's got, where's my camera, there we go. It's got lots of bubbles, and this one's a little bit dense, or more dense, whatever, than um, a totally white um, dough. This one had that wheat flour in it. Remember, it was about a quarter of the flour was a wheat flour, um, but it looks great. It rolls good, I'm excited. So we're going to get ready for our dinner, but I hope you enjoyed learning about sourdough focaccia and I hope you try it and try whatever flavors. Tell me what kind of flavors you guys have tried and what you guys like. I'd love to hear from you.